All right, so now that the early access period for Resident Evil Reverse is over and we're now waiting for the launch day, I do want to go over and talk about probably the most OP character in the game at the moment. And this is not just my opinion either, like I've been seeing many people online talking about the most popular and most played characters in the game and he is definitely the most popular one that comes up and I am talking about uh, Chris Redfield. Following up slightly behind him is Jill Valentine. I think a lot of people played her as well, and I definitely did see a good amount of them as well. And she's also really strong, but Chris is just something on a different level. So we'll go over his abilities now, so you know what to expect on day one, and talk about how they could tune him a little bit. Alright, so let's talk about his abilities. So his R1 ability, or his right bumper ability, is the Exo Glove from the Not Hero DLC. And what that does is you launch forward, punch enemies onto the floor, and it does a high amount of damage. His second ability is Indomitable Spirit, and that basically makes you immune for a brief period to flinch and knock back, and you can survive anything that would kill you. So you're pretty much unkillable while it's up, which is very, very, very good if used at the right time during a fight. You can pretty much outlive everyone apart from like the high tier creatures but any other any other hero character low tier creature as in a molded or even like a chicken hunter you will probably outlive them and probably kill them and on top of that obviously with the coin system you can increase the damage of his weapons and he it does make him quite unstoppable um if you know what you're doing and when to use his abilities but yeah all in all a pretty good ability set and his weapon combo is also really quite strong as well obviously the ar is really good at long range um pretty much any of the maps in the game or the two maps in the game at the moment you can pretty much outrange everyone um, apart from like one or two people in certain situations which is really good i've killed plenty of people on the bacon map from one side to the other and it's very effective so is he overpowered i would say probably yes at the moment especially the um invulnerability ability it is interesting i think that what they could do to adjust that slightly is not make it so you can't die but more so maybe for like a brief period while it's active you take like 50 percent less damage so you can still die but um you know you can maybe survive more so it, it would make more sense then to pop it at the beginning of a fight rather than near the end because obviously if you're near the end of the fight you're probably gonna die anyway but if you start at the beginning then there's a chance they'll still kill you if they're good with headshots and stuff like that but at the same time, you still get that extra little buff, so it may help you in that fight. As for his glove, I don't think that's that bad. Maybe reduce the damage on it slightly, because pretty much what I've been able to do with it is half shoot a mag into a molded or something like that, and then punch them and they die. And it's very strong. The knockback is quite hard as well, like they do go quite far. And obviously while they're getting up, in the getting up animation, you can still kill them. Um, so maybe with that as well, maybe on a gameplay level, maybe when you're getting up off the floor after being knocked back, um, either you take less damage or you're invulnerable for a little bit because it's kind of unfair to have to get up off the floor and wait for the animation and still be able to be killed. Um, it does cause a lot of issues, especially considering how many stuns and stun locks there are in the game. But overall, with his combination of abilities and stuff like that, he can be played pretty offensive quite easily without roaring about dying too much. If you think you can get a kill, you can probably get it. One thing I will say, like you just saw in the footage, do not punch a molded when it's close to death, else you'll die. Um, especially if it's already hit you a couple times, the explosion off of it will probably kill you. It happens to me quite regularly, even now, after playing the game for a good while. Um, just a little tip for you there. But with him, I think he's good for kind of beginners of the game. You know, his kit's easy to use. Um, it's very basic, it's just a punch and then a the passive ability that basically keeps you alive. And it makes the gunfights with him a little bit more easy. So there's definitely better characters, I would say, but he's definitely the most approachable i think that's maybe why jill is the second most played because she's not as easy to learn and there's definitely some technical um things you can do with her kit if you know what you're doing um but again she doesn't have that invulnerability state she still has the ar her handgun is also really really good um doesn't really have a knockback ability but just, she does have a stun and obviously her uh second ability is the mines which again can be used quite tactically and if you know what you're doing with them can be very very effective against a lot of kills but uh, Chris is just, again, he's more noob friendly, I'll say. That's probably why you see him so much. That's probably why everyone says he's the most popular and most powerful because he's easier to use than probably the rest of them. The reason I say that is because I've seen a few um, Ada players during the time with the early access and they've been absolutely dominating the entire match. And she's very good if you know what you're doing. Obviously, with her weapon, you have to have a pretty good aim. Her abilities are very, like, focused on a certain, like, target. You have to be pretty accurate with them. But if you learn Ada, and I've played against some good Adas, 
Um, she's very strong. So Chris, yes, he's really powerful, and it's probably more so noticeable because, again, he's so approachable to play. But that's pretty much it. I don't know how they're going to tone the game over time. I'd imagine when there's updates coming out for the game, they'll balance characters out, adjust them slightly. Hopefully, that'll keep the game kind of, you know, keep it fresh. Like any game with hero shooter mechanics and stuff like that, where everyone's got set abilities, you always want to see like the, the meta of the game change over time. Like one week or one month or two, it could be Chris, and then they do an update, and all of a sudden Leon's like the best character in the game. And it, shakes things up a bit keeps it fresh as well as the new content that comes out as well because there is a big roadmap coming for the game and they've got stuff planned so hopefully with those updates there is also balances as well but that is going to do it for the video um we're pretty much waiting now until the full release on friday and i do kind of want to go over what my plan is for this weekend because obviously the winter's expansion is out on friday as well so my initial plan with the launch of the expansion is to stream the shadows of rose dlc at some point on day one and just do a complete run of that. I'm avoiding everything about it. So when I do stream the game, obviously no spoilers in the chat and stuff like that. It's going to be completely fresh to me. I haven't seen anything. I haven't read any reviews. I do not know what I'm going into. Um, on the Saturday, I'll probably want to, want to do a run of the third person campaign. And then on the Sunday, I'll probably do a smaller stream where we go over the mercenary stuff. And then the following week, I'll do videos across the entire lot of the uh, expansion. I'm sure there's going to be more challenge runs to do within the DLC. I want to do some more challenge runs with the game in third person, that'll be fun. And obviously mercenaries as well, I want to try and get like SSS ranks like I have done with every stage in Village so far. So, pretty packed week next week and this weekend, as well as the full release of Reverse. I'll definitely be checking if there's anything new on day one, which I think there might be. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a busy time this next, next week, so I'm looking forward to it. But yeah, that is it. Let me know who you played the most in Reverse. Let me know who you had the most fun with. If you think anyone else is probably the most powerful character, do let me know down below. But yeah, until Friday, thank you all for coming by, and I'll see you all then.